Yeah. Hello and welcome to Insight Germany. My guest today is an entrepreneur who was born in India, educated in the United States and took a business degree at Harvard University. A year and a half ago, he moved to Berlin and set up a brand new business. Narain Sham is the boss of an innovative travel company called Go Euro. Welcome to the Hi. show. Hi, Robin. I should say the first, the full title of your company, which is GoEuro.com, because it's an internet travel company. Now, there's loads of them out there. So what's unique about yours? Um, yes, so first of all, we have GoEuro.de, .co.uk, .es, .it, .fr. All, all, oh, I see, for all the European different exactly, countries. Exactly, goeuro.com would work. It, it's all the same. It works. Uh, the website is the same. Um, yeah, fundamentally what we do is, is different than any other travel website out there. Um, the, the major difference is we bring all modes of travel into one, um, one website. Uh, so it's basically one search for you to find out what's the most efficient way to get from one place to the other. And so, so just to get in, uh, in the detail, um, you're going from Edinburgh to London or from Berlin to Frankfurt or Berlin to Prague. For example, you type in Berlin, Prague, we will tell you the flight is, I guess, four hours. It takes an hour to the airport, an hour check-in, an hour flight and an hour on the other side. So we never show a one hour flight as a one hour flight. It's the total journey time and the cost to get there. And we compare that to the train also probably four hours and, and, um, and the price, and then a bus is probably six hours on the price. And based on your price elasticity, you select which mode of travel. So basically we're bringing all the options into one website. So you don't have to search four websites to figure out whether a bus is faster or cheaper than a train, or what is the difference in the time versus price that I'm willing to pay. In, in this is in the yeah. in basic what we do. But beyond this, we allow search more natural. Travel search like, I don't know, Expedia, Kayak, Orbit, all, all the big ones, they fundamentally have been focused on air transportation, and which is you go from airport to airport, London Heathrow to EDI, is Edinburgh. Um, we do more natural search. I'm going from, like I said, Edinburgh, and I want to go to Cambridge in the UK. I want to type Cambridge and let Go Euro find out what's the best airport to fly to, and also mm. the train to the airport. So it's not just comparing, but we also combine to give complete journeys, and it's not because there's, I mean, Germany has 25 airports, but 9,000 train stations. How do I get to yeah. the we're, other? We're going to hear more about that in, in, in the report coming up. And yeah. I realize that must be difficult. But what gave you the idea to do this? Yeah, I'm, um, I traveled Europe for about four months in 2010. Um, I did, I think, 14 countries. Um, I was just backpacking and I realized that uh, ground transportation in Europe is, is phenomenal. It's really I, of all over the world, I think. Train, the optionality of trains and buses, the convenience of getting to the city center is really, it's, it's very well laid out infrastructure. Uh, but then um, the, the ability to find all these options in one place is, is, is very dispersed. Like, I'm, I don't know, most people- But you could have, I mean, you came from America. Yeah. You could have done it in America much more easily, couldn't you? <laughs> and made more money with longer distances. No, I don't think so, because in general, the US, it, it doesn't apply. People who fly, the geography is very different than Europe. People mostly fly or take a bus. The, there's no comparison of, of the two, but in Europe, it's so close to each, each other that the, the need for people to switch more based on total travel time and price is much more in Europe. And that's why I even called it Go Euro, because it's very Europe-centric mm. and it's not easily applicable to the rest of the globe. Yeah, and it's harder maybe to get around Europe in such a way. It, it, it is, especially, I mean, in, in general, it is easy to get around, but it's hard to find how to yeah, get around. That's what, sorry, that's what yeah. I meant. Yeah. How did you get the finance? Uh, okay, that's, <laughs> that's one of the harder questions. In general, it's never easy to raise money. It really is not, in, whether you're in Silicon Valley or in New York, it's, it's just never easy, especially if it doesn't matter which, whether you went to Harvard or whether you're, it's just hard to raise money. Um, what, I mean, in general, it, um, I guess, what we're building is, is a very big opportunity in a new space of travel. It hasn't been done before. Um, 
and uh, the opportunity is really big and when you find investors who go after a big vision and if you show early traction then uh, that's a good mix of uh, um, you know um, oh, sorry early traction what does that mean so i guess let me it depends what company you build um, if you're building if you're building something that's more social like social media um, then uh, you need to have traction to bring in finances what we build is is contractual i for me to launch in germany i need to have deutsche bahn and and uh, all the big bus companies like eurolines the city yeah. the city mind fan bus yeah, all, all the names exactly yeah. um, so for me in, in the ability to demo straight uh, that we can do this is by going and getting contracts and then and telling then you go and get the, to the, the investors and say now <laughs> we have all the contracts now yeah. let me raise money and build out this this proof of concept and that's kind of what we did in the last round it was a huge round it was uh, um, and, and then how much of the finance is german finance uh, half is german and is that very di- i mean the other half is american perhaps yes, american. and what are the different conditions of uh, american uh, finance and german finance are the germans much tougher in what they want out of you <laughs> yeah i think or, so in, or, in in general it's easier perhaps i don't know no 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 in general raising money in germany is tougher is much tougher <laughs> because people are investors everything are risk less risky uh, most investors i want to say haven't seen um 10 companies go through the full life cycle so most of them uh probably I, i don't know how many of them even know what it takes to raise 10 rounds of finances or five until you sell it's not just i raise finances until i get to the next round and then i figure out what to do it's basically future thinking on what happens through the different life cycle of the company this experience is is limited um so in in general Uh, terms are tougher in Germany, but but, but, but worthwhile, but, presumably. Other, uh, I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to. I have to do that. I am in Germany. We're building a company in 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 Europe. I have to go to European investors because I need to execute here. I need to hire labor uh, here. I need to. I need to get access to new contracts. I need to build a, a market here, mm-hmm. and uh, and that is possible because people on the ground here know how to do this. So it's not. I can't get around the fact that I'm going to get American money and build it. It's, it's impossible. Okay, we've talked enough about the whys and wherefores. Let's have a look at how it all works. Marina Wachowski is planning a weekend trip from Heidelberg to London. She browses the internet for the cheapest and fastest route. There's plenty of choice, but it's difficult to get an overview. You could go by plane, car or train, but there are separate sites for each mode of transport. When I'm planning a trip, I use the National Rail website or Expedia and shop around. Just planning and searching the web already takes up to three or four hours, and that's just too much. The Go Euro website aims to fill a gap in the market. For a trip from Heidelberg to London, it draws up itineraries with optimized combinations of different means of transport. The trip might kick off with a train ride to the next airport. In London, a shuttle bus continues into the city centre, all booked in one go. Go Euro is a Berlin-based startup which is still in the test phase. Database specialists are currently working to get as many transport providers on board as possible. Founder Naren Sham set out on this mission two years ago. Bringing this data together is a crazy uh, idea, but it's, I don't think it's uh, unreasonable. Um, if it solves a problem and people are facing this problem every day, somebody has to solve it. The project has received 3 million euros of funding by various investors. There are competitors. Waymate is just one of them. But all of them face the same uphill battle. Getting to the stage where they can have full coverage of all European cities. Data records for a myriad of bus and rail companies are often difficult to access. Andreas Knie is the head of the Innovation Centre for Mobility and Societal Change in Berlin. The transport expert is familiar with the fragmented European market. It's difficult because the transport industry isn't ready yet. They all still live in their own world. Bus companies think in terms of buses, rail companies in terms of trains, and car rentals in terms of rented cars. They don't link up. Public transport in Europe is still living in the 19th century. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So we will have to go country by country and integrate trains, buses, everything. And then we launch one country and then we move to the next country. 
Marina Wachowski's visit to the website was definitely worth it. It only took her a few clicks to book her trip to London. Now she has plenty of time to pack. <laughs> and my guest is Naren Sham. Um, do you have nerves of steel? <laughs> I, I, I built them over the last year. Uh, yeah, uh, I would say, sure. Okay. You said that Rome wasn't built in a day. How long is it going to take you? Uh, a year, probably, uh, at least to get most of Western Europe. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Um, so we are moving very fast. We're growing very fast. Uh, my problem now is uh, that I don't have enough resources to integrate the number of contracts we have in the pipeline. Um, it's a good problem to have, but we are moving much faster. But it's also, like I said, Rome wasn't built in a day. We can't have every country in all over Europe, every tiny town, village searchable on day one. It just is impossible. Yeah. I mean, this bus, train, flight business, getting it all together, that's obviously why you're traveling. You mentioned to me you've traveled 12 countries in the last three weeks. Um, yeah. The expert there in that report said it, it, it's still in the 19th century. He didn't even say the 20th century, actually. Yeah. Where in the 19th century, there weren't buses and trains. But, yeah. um, so, uh, but is it really that archaic, the whole system? It, it, uh, it is close to yeah, historical in general. Um, the easiest way to explain it is, uh, is uh, just if you look at the air industry, uh, TXL is Berlin Teagle, LHR is London Heathrow. So whether you search in Buenos Aires or your Sydney, it's always, you type in LHR, it's always London Heathrow because systems underlying databases are all standardized in what's called GDS, is Global Distribution Systems. Uh, but when you come to the train and bus space, every company has its own internal databases so they don't talk to each other. There's no way um, London St. Pancras or Paris Gare du Nord is exact same station, is a different station code in Deutsche Bahn than Thales, than SNCF, then then Eurostar. So so, yeah. Don't get into too much. I okay. can see it's complicated. Yes. Let's leave it at that. Now you did send us some pictures, uh, and yep. strangely enough, this first picture is of you at an airport. I think. Yeah. 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 And who's who's that? That's you? that's me and my brother. I actually I think this is probably New York Airport JFK when we were dropping my my mom off at the airport. I, I think so. I oh, see so you weren't actually doing business in this photo. No, this, no. Oh, Well, that's nice to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And wait, well, we'll have another one where I think, I don't think you're doing business here either. No, this was uh, one of my best friends, Ernesto from Harvard. Uh, he got married in, um, in Rio, uh, in Brazil. And this was me trying to be the, I guess, I, I guess you just... Imitating the statue. Exactly. In Rio. Exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. Now, five, five people... Yeah. Working for Go Euro in March. Yeah. I think there's 32 now. 32, 35, but 32, something like that. I, I lost count. Now, is it mostly Germans or is it very multicultural? No, it is very multicultural. Something I'm extremely proud of, and I actually share with anybody who comes in the office or investors, is we're from 12 nationalities and we're 50% women. Uh, so it's very, it's very diverse. It's, it's really multicultural. The, the main reason is that. It's not. It's not. It's. It's out of need. When we go to Spain or when we go to the UK, we need English people to code and program and know the geography on how train and buses work. And then same for marketing. Yeah. I have to quickly say that I went to England about two weeks ago, and um, I, I, I went. I came back. Okay. Then I went rese researching for this interview. I went on your website, and I I'm rather rather. Sad to say, well, that you could have got me there cheaper. So <laughs> congratulations to you. Why Berlin? Um, lots of hype about a Silicon Valley in Berlin. Yep. Um, but is it all hype or is there really business going on here? No, there's definitely really business. It's not, it's, it's far from Silicon Valley. It's, it's not, no, there's no, sure. I mean, it's not, it's Berlin is Berlin. It's not Silicon Valley. It'll never be. Um, but it's not hype. It's, there's a lot of business going on. There's a lot of good companies being formed here. Um, uh, the ecosystem is being built slowly. It's still at its nascent stages. Um, in general, for the ecosystem, you need good entrepreneurs and people who work, who take a risk to work for a startup instead of taking a job at Daimler or Bosch or or Siemens, one of the big companies. I want to work for a young, innovative company. There's, this need from people is definitely there in Berlin. Access to finances, it's still very slow. Uh, so this needs to catch up and then a few exits have to happen. Um, because when exits happen, all the people who sold 
now will reinvest back into the ecosystem because that is their world. That's all we live in. I've, this is all I've been doing for so many years and I want to do it again. Um, so that part hasn't happened. So there, it's a long way, but it's definitely not hype. I believe in the ecosystem here. I um, am very happy to be part of the early stages of the ecosystem where it's still not you know, as well established as New York or even Tel Aviv or, or San Francisco, for example. Uh, but it will get there. I'm very positive and uh, I, I hope I'm part of this. But when you came to Germany, there were various problems like opening a bank account, yeah. you know, and, and being allowed to work here. Yeah. Uh, how did you, I mean, how did you overcome these things? Uh, yeah, I was very lucky. I had a host family. My friend's parents uh, basically adopted me. Uh, in, in their house and they helped me a lot. There's a lot of loopholes. In order to get a bank account, you need a legal address. Uh, in order to get a legal address, you need a, I forget the loopholes right now, but in order to get a legal address, you need a rent contract. In order to get a rent contract, you need a bank address. So you can't break this loophole easily. So, but I had my host mm. family who took me and gave their address. Oh, you see, you had to have an address. That's very German. Yeah. 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 Okay. See, I, but did it, did, it, did it at all sort of worry you? You'd, you'd put all your eggs in one basket yeah. and come to a country where you didn't speak the language yeah. and with all these minor, well, not minor, but from a business point of view, I can't open a bank account, I can't, you know, get registered. Didn't you sit, be, begin to think, oh, my goodness, I should have gone to London or I don't know where yeah. or stayed in New York? Yeah. What, yeah? I mean, if, if opening a bank account is my worst of my worries, I would never be an entrepreneur uh, yeah, there's tougher problems that come in life. These are just, I want to say, nuisances that you overcome very quickly. Yeah. But, but generally, you would think of uh, Germany being a good place to have a business on the hot, you know. I mean, they cons. could. I mean, they could make it easier to open a business here. The the whole legal system <clears throat> and everything. It's harder to hire talent, for example, from outside because the visa process is not very clear. Um, so there's definitely roadblocks that can be removed, um, but I wouldn't say it's a bad place to do business. I mean, there's a lot of good entrepreneurs who come not from Germany and start businesses here. But, but maybe these roadblocks are also to make it a safer, safer for your business. Could uh, that be so? It, it depends. I mean, if 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 uh, I give you an example, if if we, we we get a lot of international people from, we have people from New Zealand, from Brazil, from from Belarus, etc. And when they apply for their visa, we don't know how long it takes. It may be anything from two weeks to three months. And as a startup, you're running on a tight cash schedule, so you can't predict. So I don't know if it makes any safer or unsafe. Uh, of course, you know you need. You can't have no regulation at all where, you know, you can do what yeah, it's not free I mean. flow. Yeah, um, some restrictions, but of course it can be easier. Like, I don't know enough about the tax system here, but I heard Germans complain about the tax system as well. Um, can it be easier? Sure, I think so. Well, all I can say to that, and I, I'll be careful what I say, is at <laughs> least we pay our taxes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not referring, do, to, I, you. I'm not referring to you at all. But, <laughs> I do know. as well. You came to Berlin for commercial reasons, not because it's cool. I mean, you're a young guy. You didn't come here because it's cool, because of the great clubs, like the majority of young people or come here to study, you know. So, so apart from the business advantages of Berlin, I know you fly around a yeah. tremendous amount, right? Yeah. But are there other pluses? To hear what? what uh... Oh yeah, there's a lot. I love I love Germany for like yeah. many many reasons. Um, in the autobahn, I want to start with the great road system. I mean, the infrastructure here is very dependable. I know I can take a train and it's almost always on time. Yeah. Um, social security is very good here. Um, um, safety. I mean, most, I, I guess I want to say most Germans don't realize how safe this country is. You go live in a country like India. India is also safe, but there's so many parts of the world that are still, you know, I can't go out after 12 p.m. alone or 12 in the night uh, alone, or I can't come back home alone. I have to take a taxi or I have to always travel with a friend just because it's, it's in, unsafe. So these are, these things are almost a given free education system. I mean, in the US, it's still expensive to go to school. I have to take a lot of, borrow a lot of money to go to school. So Germany provides a lot of good things for its people. And I really respect this, this well-functioning economy here that, uh, that I just have to come and fit in and then everything functions around, yeah. around itself. We've already discovered that my guest spends a lot of time living out of a suitcase. 
but we managed to catch up with him when, rather surprisingly, he did have a bit of downtime here in Berlin. Hello, Marie. Oh, okay. So that's my mom. I Skype with my parents once every week, at least once a week, if I can. Ma, Monday San Francisco, Wednesday Boston, Friday I'm back. It is nice when I am a little more relaxed and stress-free, and then I chat with them for easily an hour and a half. Now I'm in Berlin. I travel. I don't know the next three weeks. I'm in seven countries. The last few weeks I was in. I was on the plane most of my time, um, and. Uh, uh, for me, I want to come back home to Berlin. So this is my home now. How much time do you give the people? What's yellow legacy? My work is my home now. My work is my wife. Yeah, I guess. I'm married to my job for the moment. Um, you get once in a lifetime opportunity to some build something big, and uh, yeah, I'm going through that right now. I'm just thinking that you will have a lot more time because of I have a very, I wouldn't say stressful life, but I have a very full life, very packed. In the morning, I, I check my calendars to see how much breathing room I have during the day. And it's normally maybe 12 to 12.30, and sometimes it's good to just relax with my host family. Okay, that's where we started, at Alexanderplatz. And now we're going to Malstoff, my host family. I'll take you guys there. Nice to see you again. Mm. <laughs> when I moved to Germany, the, one of the most important things was my host family, they really helped me a lot. Uh, everything was different, everything was difficult. It's, it's good to have some amount of comfort in people you trust. The first evening we were invited uh, to my boss, yeah. uh, and that, that's why Mark and... Well, my host family, they're all educated economists, uh, so this is great for me because I love economics. Uta's cooking is great because one, it's, I think the first month I moved, she tried a lot of things. When I eat the whole plate, that means she knows I loved it. When I leave a little, she knows I didn't really like it. Oh, my stuff is still here. I think Ute is just like my other mom, my German mom. I think uh, very soon, hopefully, my real mom will meet Ute, and and I know they they really think the same. <laughs> they seem a lovely family. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the food here now? <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I like some things of the food. Um, Käse Spätzle is my favorite. Uh, Kartoffel Salat as well. Um, yeah, you, I think you put that in our questionnaire. And I immediately thought Käse Spätzle is quite bland. Yeah. Now, this I'm sure you're going to tell me this is a cliche, but an Indian liking sort of bland, bland. Well, I lived in the US. I lived in the US tw tw twelve years. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, um, but no, I, I I like variety of food as well. I, I never eat uh, the same thing two two meals, same cuisine, for example. And also because I'm lucky that I travel so much, you know, it's, it's Spanish or French or Italian or or or, or mid Middle Eastern food. I, I just really like variety of food, and I can't eat um, a lot of meat. Um, so because of that, I'm limited in my choice and I, I try to make the best of it. Okay. Now, you're a Harvard graduate, a high-flying businessman, if I may say so. But instead of staying in a posh hotel when you came here, yeah. you found a family to stay out, and ex they'll excuse me saying, out in the sticks. It's not in the centre of town. Yeah. Why did you do that? I know you had to have an address, but I mean, yeah. why didn't you stay in a hotel and get going? You know? I mean, it's it's not it's not personal. I mean, the whole point of I mean, what we do, and I believe this so strongly, is that Europe has such uh, diversity in culture and people and everything. And if I don't experience that from living in the home of somebody, I'm not living in Europe. I'm living in a hotel like, like a tourist. And so, uh, it, it for me, it, it was completely necessary to be. If I'm going to live here, which I, when I moved from New York, I had made up my mind that I'm going to live here. Um, and 
for in order to do that, I might as well dive into it fully, then stay in a hotel, yeah. find an apartment, etc. And, and is that that is that? That's that, Martin. Yeah. That's Martin, yeah. their son. That, that was yeah. the contact in New York. Yes, exactly. He was studying there. He was. He was. Uh, he was doing a, uh, an exchange semester, and he um, he was actually in Boston, and he used to come uh, to New York because he loves New York, and he crashed on my couch every time he was oh, there. And, yeah. and and is he involved in the business? No, he's yeah. not. He actually works in Frankfurt. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, we've got some more pictures because I want to talk. We would not talk about your second family. Okay. We want to talk about your family. Okay. And I want to see. Yeah, this is so cute. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And I've, for the first time, I've just sp waited one and a half years to yep. bring cricket into the conversation <laughs> on Insight Germany, which has nothing to do with Germany. But it, I mean, India is a big, huge cricket nation. Yeah. And you. Um, I am not such a big fan of cricket. I play basketball. I used to play cricket as a kid uh, until I broke my nose um, because of a stupid reason. And uh, since then I stopped playing cricket and I just picked up basketball. Well, that's the end of our cricket conversation <laughs> here on Insight Germany, which is just as well. One more picture from your youth, though, oh, which I rather liked. And I wondered, that's... There we go. That's you with your brother. That's me and my brother, yeah. And... I wondered those uniforms, are that, is that from a, a layover from British yeah, th times? Yeah, I think so. I went to a, I went to a, a very Christian school called St. Paul's. And I mean, what's missing here is the blazer. Every day in the hot sun, we had to wear a full blazer and a tie and it's just burning inside, but you, it's compulsory and it's extremely strict. So, and I had to bicycle five kilometers to school. So. Yes, it was it was uniform. Every yeah, school has amazing, uniform. amazing. Now you were born in Bangalore, which is the third biggest city in India. It's I believe it's right, isn't it? Right in the middle of India. It's yeah. so, the middle of the southern part. Yeah, and is now known as the Silicon Valley of India. Yeah. Now, see, so this is one of the top ten preferred destinations for entrepreneurs in the world. Um, you're not there at the moment, though, no, so okay. But can you imagine going back and doing business there? Uh, yeah, sure. If I have a good idea that can be built into a billion-dollar business in, from Bangalore, sure. Um, would it be very different doing business there? It would be very different, but again, you have to remember, I'm, I would be a second-time entrepreneur. S successful or not, I still have all the learnings, and I'm happy for what I'm doing now, and all my lessons go everywhere with me. So I know what it takes to bring things off the ground and get it running. Um, Growing up in India, did you uh, know anything about Germany? Uh, not really, not really. I just, uh, World War II is the only thing we study and that's probably the extent of, my first exposure to Germany was when I moved to the US and then I started, and then my travels here and mm. I was in Berlin in 2010, absolutely fell in love with the city and that's why I decided that it's not just a good ecosystem for startups, it's also a good city to live in. Um, what was it that made you fall in love with that? Um, I have to say Berlin has a very good mix of alternative culture, uh, which is young, um, uh, artistic, uh, a lot of good energy, but more so it's very down to earth. There's no, uh, there's no fake aura that I need to have a lot of money to have a successful life here. Uh, it's really down to earth and I really like this because I come from a very like it's middle class family in India. And uh, for me, it's it's very easy to connect with people that are down to earth as well. And this this I like about Berlin a lot. Where, where, where some cities, you really need a lot of cash to have a has a have a very good lifestyle. And you don't here, no. That's no, true. I don't. Yeah, yeah. There is a, a very much a truth in that. Very, it is very down to earth. Yeah. You were in America. Yeah. We should show a very proud picture. Yeah. I it was think a very of you. proud day. Yeah. Uh, was that? It was, Harvard? Yes, that was Harvard and it was one of my best days. And and what, what did you what was your award? What was your graduation? You got a uh, I, I got a I got a master's in business administration from Harvard. The M the, the famous MBA. Harvard MBA, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And we and, and just one more that I saw. I think now these are 
These are Harvard friends? Yeah, these are a couple of my best friends from there. Morgan is actually French. Uh, he's also an entrepreneur. He works in New York and Ernesto, the, I already mentioned him. Uh, he's Italian and he's, um, he got married in Rio. He's married to a Brazilian girl. And none of these guys uh, over the years are involved in your business No, now. but they have their own stuff. Yeah, uh, so I, I was just wondering, so you really had this idea yeah. and you came on your own. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of guts to come. You just... Flew over, yeah. you obviously had a contact when you landed That's here. That's it, there. packed my bags and I was here. And then, then what did you do next after getting your bank account? <laughs> you so, know. Yeah, I mean, I was just, in the beginning, I was, I was really involved in my business. I started to do a few events and I realized it wasn't much value, so I, we have a no event policy in the company now. Um, yeah, you just get... Uh, things moving. There's no secret sauce uh, at mm. all, really. Uh, for me, for our business, it was to get the contracts up and running, to hire people, which was probably the toughest challenge, probably even more than getting the contracts, is I had to convince Germans that, hey, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm going to bring in the contracts, and I'm going to bring in the finances, but work for me for almost no cost, because you need to believe in my vision. So the, the initial stages are very difficult to convince people. I mean, do they get shares in, yeah, everybody, in the company? Most everybody after a certain time gets yeah. shares in the company. Yeah. Three months, actually. Yeah. And, and uh, did you put much of your own money in it? Uh, yes, I put some of my own money yeah, cause in you, it. Yeah, because, I mean, we've, we've skipped through that, but you had a successful time in the car industry in, in, in America, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I, I grew up the ranks very quickly in the car industry. I was a product manager. Um, and then I, I moved on from there to Harvard, and then I went and worked in in, uh, in the financial services industry in New York. So I had some, let's say, savings. Yeah, yeah, I did put some money in to get it up and running. And is that where your interest in fast cars? And fast autobahn started. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. I always loved fast cars. When I grew up in India, I used to, I used to regularly watch Formula One uh, as a kid. So fast cars is something I really, um, yeah, I love. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's not just cars fast. Anything a slow, slow life is just not me. I'm always on the. Yeah, move. I can see that. Yeah. But Germany's a good place for fast cars. Isn't Absolutely, it? the best, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's good, not good car manufacturers and the road traffic system. That's that supports this. Yeah. It's not actually true that there's no speed limit on the German Autobahn, only on certain stretches. But even so, from around the world, people head here to tear up the rubber and even on the country roads. Just before we go on, if you want to write to us about speed limits in Germany or any subject that comes up in the show, the address is insight at dw.de. We always like to get post who doesn't. So drop us a line. Uh, my guest is Naren Sham, who, who likes a bit of speed. So do you own a Porsche yet? No, I actually haven't had a car in a very long time. I use public transportation to get there. I have a bicycle. I don't know where it is also, as well. But would you like to drive fast down the motorway? I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I have an opportunity to rent a car and drive, I, I have done it a few times as well, absolutely. I should mention once again that you can drive um, fast on German motorways, but it's not limitless. There are one or two places on the German autobahn where it is limitless, but they are few and far between. But you can drive quite fast, yeah. You left a well-paid job, basically, to set up this business. Yeah. Why? Why were you so convinced? Um, yeah, that's basically the, the opportunity is, is unique. Nobody has done it before, this bringing Europe in terms of travel. So the, the market is huge. I think last I checked on research reports, 320-something billion euro market. So it's a huge market. And uh, the, the need from a cost consumer point of view, like if you're a consumer, I saw people searching on four different websites trying to piece this together that I was completely convinced. But it, it's also not just the idea. It was whether I was happy in my previous job. What is it that I want to do? I'm in general much more risky. Our, I guess my our lawyers, uh, company lawyers tell I, I'm one of the riskiest entrepreneurs she's ever met, even, in, even in, among entrepreneurs. Um, so... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't something that I'm building something that's useful for people versus just working on deals. So it, it, it's because it seems to me it's not about the money. It's the it's chase. About, yes. It's the chase. It's the sort of thing to create something. Yes. Yeah. So when you've 
when you've run the race yeah. and got there, yeah. will you leave it and go on to the next one? No. And start the chase again? A bit like a second wife. You mentioned you're yeah. married to your job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. to answer, yes, I would absolutely do that. I mean, the energy, the ups and downs here, I guess I'm addicted to it. Um, after this, whatever happens, yes or no, I have now a very good network of investors and, and people. Uh, so I will start over again and build the next thing. Yeah. I just don't know yet what it is. Okay. Now, you also involved in something here in Berlin called a startup boot camp. Is that for other entrepreneur, entrepreneurs? Yes. Uh, I, I, I have to say I'm, I, I'm involved as best as my time permits. Um, it's basically to help others build up the ecosystem, sharing my knowledge, how to raise money. Most of the time, I just make connections to them to raise money. Uh, other times, I tell them how to set up founder stock, how to divide... Uh, equity between two or three founders to make it fair and how to give st shares to employees, what is fair in the market and how to motivate them intrinsically rather than, you know, just based on salary because salary is something we can't match to the Daimlers and, 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 the, and, the, and the Bosches. So what is how to build a company ground up, uh, how, to, how to get um, the different elements lined up so that you can get traction. Yeah, I, I, I help out. Uh, um, and one other thing, um, a different thing you're involved in, completely different thing, and I know you actually, uh, it's something you don't talk about a lot, yeah. but you give some of your money back, don't you? You're paying for yeah. education of a number of children yeah. back in Bangalore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's something I actually started doing um, 10 years ago after my first job. Um, I, like I said, I come from a very middle class family in India, and to go all the way up to Harvard is... I have to say is, is something I'm extremely proud of and that comes because of education. My ability to now quit a well-paid job in New York and do something that I really want to do with this flexibility is because I'm confident that if this doesn't work, I can easily find something else that's because of education. So I think to change the entire country towards the positive only happens because of higher education. And uh, it's not a lot, like I said, it's a share of my, my, my money, um, but I've been doing it regularly, 10 years, every single month. And, uh, the, and there are kids in Bangalore getting an education because yeah, of you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right now, I think it's eight to ten, and my mom is is the other half of me that makes sure that we get it. We do not just education. We we buy books for them. We pay for uni school fees. Um, sometimes we also pay for health. Uh, uh, I think um, there's one kid who who had uh, an illness, so we paid for medical stuff. But by and large, I focus more of my personal efforts on education because this is something I'm completely convinced can change for the better. Yeah, I completely agree with you. It yep. can change the world. Very good that you, wonderful that you do that sort of thing. Finally, we've nearly reached the end. We turn to our questionnaire and a couple of things I want to ask you. Um, about the autobahn, you said one of the things that you say is a good German characteristic is drivers cursing people from other countries yep. on the autobahn. Yeah, I, I find it extremely amusing when you sit next to a German uh, and they see the number plate and they will see it's from Frankfurt or somewhere else. And they say, oh, this, this person's from Frankfurt. They don't know how to drive or, you know, the other way around. Oh, I see. And, oh and from other states. states even, Sorry, and in then the country. In the country. And then they see a Dutch car or a Belgian car. Oh, these Belgians, they don't know how to drive. Yeah. It's, it's really amusing for me. And, an irritating German characteristic you've put down as no free water in oh, restaurants. Yes. Yeah, this really upsets me. For me, it's like air. Is air is free, water should be free. I mean, it's not that there's oh, because no Because I see. It's, it's, like, it's like my birthright to get water. Uh, but they, they offer you mineral water, which you cost out which, of a bottle. Yeah, exactly. You have to pay for it. But more, more, I guess more upsetting is the fact that when you ask for tap water, they don't like it. They give you a, a frustrated face that you're not, <laughs> you're going to save two euros on this bottle of water. So, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. something okay. that... <laughs> okay, but I know you love living here, really. Best kept secret in Germany. Inside Germany, they complain about everything, and outside, they're <laughs> proud of everything German. That's about the Germans themselves, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah, any German, if, you, if you're traveling with them in, in New York uh, or anywhere in the US, they say, oh, this waterfall, we have it in Germany. Oh, the cars are not good enough. Like, and here, oh, the train is late. Uh, everything's not working as it's supposed to be. So it's, you're passionate about Germany. Outside, but inside yeah. it's more. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. I think it's true of other 
that's others as well. Yeah. Naren Sham, it's been fascinating talking to you. Thank I you. know you've got an app coming soon as well. We haven't had time to yeah. talk about that. Good luck with Go Euro. Thank you. Uh, and look out for that. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for watching. And join me next time when there'll be another fascinating guest on Insight Germany. Until then, from me and all the crew here in Berlin, bye-bye. <laughs>